What's good, Washington fans? So today was the first day of OTAs. Um, the guys look pretty excited. We got to see Ryan Fitzmagic and his fir first time seeing him in a Washington football jersey. I know it's a practice jersey, but we got to see the beer gut and the beard of Fitzmagic. So um, 80 guys, 86 guys went or have arrived or were participating in voluntary OTAs today which is huge. I mean, not a lot of guys, there are some guys that don't show up. Some teams don't have any, they're not even going to have OTAs this year. And also the players union told players not, they encourage them not to go to OTAs. So it just shows Ron Rivera's influence on the players and the changing of the culture. These guys want to get to it and get after it. They're ready to practice, whatever it is. These guys want to get chemistry together. So this is awesome to see. Um, the guys that weren't there was Chase Young wasn't there. Montez Sweat was not there. Charles Lano was not there because he had his his child the other day. He will be at the facility the facility on Friday. And Steve Sims is probably the surprise guy that was not there at OTAs. Uh, the reason why he's a surprise to me not being there is really because he's a he's a fringe guy. I mean, the three guys, of course, are going to be on the team. Charles Lano, Montez, we already know. I don't have to say nothing about Chase Young. Um, Steve Sims is a guy that probably will not be making the roster, in my opinion. I think we all can agree on that. Uh, we really revamped this wide receiver room, so I'm surprised that he's not there. I think he needs to get in there and get all the work, get on the jugs, and get all the catches that he can get because he was awful yesterday, uh, last year. He was really bad. Very disappointing because I was a pretty big uh, Steve Sims fan. I I'm still a Steve Sims fan, but if you're going to muff punts and drop the passes 50% of the time, then you got to go. Um, so observations, uh, Jason Wright uh, gave a speech to the team uh, before before practice, just talking about George Floyd, rest in peace of George Floyd. This has been the year anniversary, so sending my condolences to his family. And then um, after that, they got started. So um, I'm just going to read some nuggets here from practice. I saw some highlights and things like that, some things that I thought were pretty important that stood out. Um, if you look at the offensive line, which is, of course, we made changes. They did ask Ron Rivera about that. Um, he just said he wanted to get younger about releasing Morgan Moses and releasing Jaron Christian, mainly about Morgan Moses. I'm not going to beat a dead horse to me. I, I'm talking about Morgan Moses so much uh, over the past week, but you know, he just said he wanted to get younger. I remember he said with Carolina that they got old and uh, Morgan Moses is 30, which is not super old, but I get what he's saying. You know, Sam Cosby is what, 23, 24, Sidney Charles is young. Um, Eric Flowers isn't 30 yet, so um, he, he just wanted to get younger. So I, I understand the move. It is what it is. Um, but if you look at the starters today or the guys who lined up first, and, you know, you, you don't want to take too much stock in it, but left tackle was um, Sadiq Charles, which is very interesting because, you know, he's 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 mainly – they really want him to play guard. But, you know, he's basically, he's basically going to be the emergency left tackle or the emergency right tackle if injuries start to happen. Uh, left guard was Wes Schweitzer and not Eric Flowers. Uh, center was Chase Rie and right guard was Brandon Sheriff and that Brandon Sheriff. And then right tackle was Cornelius Lucas. So that is very interesting because in my opinion, I think Eric Flowers is going to start over Wes Schweitzer at the left guard position. But um, like I said, th this is just the first day of OTA. So uh, I wouldn't put too much stock in this. And then, of course, um, you know, Wes Schweitzer, uh, Sadiq Charles, the left tackle. Sam Cosme did is not the start. You know, he's, he wasn't one of the first guys in the lineup, but he is wearing number 76, which is pretty funny too, because, you know, you release Morgan Moses and you quickly give Sam Cosme number 76. So that is pretty interesting right there. Um, something that definitely stood out to me was uh, Diami, Diami Brown. Um, I've been butchering his name and calling him Diami, but Diami Brown, that's my guy. That was my favorite pick of the draft. Uh, he torched Troy Apke in practice. And not saying this is a big thing because everybody tortures Troy Apke. But they're trying Troy Apke at the cornerback position instead of safety because he's been pretty bad at safety. So they're trying to see what he can do at corner because he still has that speed. Honestly, I don't think it's going to work either. Diami Brown just torched him and uh, caught a nice deep pass that was almost almost a 50-yard bomb from Taylor Heineke uh, that I, I'm just excited to see Diami Brown. So the tweet from Matt Paris was Diami Brown just torched Troy Apke, who was lined up outside. McCain and Reeves were the safeties and a nice throw from Taylor Heineke. Two, Tyler Heineke also threw an interception to Derek Force, the safety out of Cincinnati. Um, so that, that's good for him. The team hyped him up. The the DB coach Chris Harris hyped him up and said that was that's what I'm talking about. So um, that's good to hear for uh, for Derek Forrest. So um, then they asked Ron Rivera about the wide receiver core as well, and he said those some of those guys can run. I mean, all those guys can run. Talk about Curtis Samuel, 
coaching him again. So he's excited to see that. And he, he, there's a video on Instagram of Terry McLaurin uh, and, and Curtis Samuel playing around having some fun. Curtis Samuel makes a funny face on the camera. So those guys were roommates at Ohio State. So the chemistry is going to be great, great with these guys. I'm excited for this receiving core. I mean, we got better. We got more speed. I, I'm super, super, super excited. So um, we talked about the offensive line. Now let's get to Landon Collins. He's a guy that has uh, that has been injured. DeShazer ever came back. He's going to be, you know, ready for week one. Landon Collins said he's going to be ready for week one. Kyle Allen is a guy coming back as well. He should be ready for week one. Not sure, though. And then Matt Ioannidis is going to be huge coming back on this D-line, adding the depth to our defensive tackle spot. I mean, I think he's the best pass rusher of the interior alignment, probably between him and Deron Payne or, or Tim Tuttle. But those guys get to the quarterback the most. Matt Ioannidis gets to the quarterback the most out of the, uh, out of all our interior alignment. So defensive linemen. So I, I can't wait for him to come back. I mean, he's going to make this defensive line even scarier. So uh, I, I'm excited for him to come back. But they did ask Landon Collins a question about him moving the linebacker. And he answered, he said, I was just laughing at it. I was drafted as a safety if someone was going to come talk to me about it, we'll talk about it. But that's about it. If we have packages they want to put me in, I'm always open to it because I'd rather have all of us DBs on the field anyway. The more defensive backs, the merrier. So that's how he feels. You know, Landon Collins, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a touchy subject when people ask him about moving a linebacker or when people call him a box safety. He gets pretty offended when people ask him about that. So it sounds like he's you know he he's he's it sounds like he's kind of open to it. Not really though. So this is something that really gets him mad. You see him on social media when people ask him about it, he responds to it in a certain way. He kind of he blocks people on Twitter, gets very upset. So I, I I still have some faith in Landon Collins. Cameron Crow played really well last year, so you know some people want him. A lot of people want him to be released or traded, but um, I, I don't think he's going to be released this year because of the dead cap hit. But adding him to the roster that should help. And I, I think Landon Collins actually played pretty well in uh, that Dallas game right before he got hurt. He got the strip sack on Andy Dalton. That was probably like the best play that he made all year, but tackling wise, he was pretty darn bad. Um, let's see here. What else? Oh, Jamin Davis was at middle linebacker today. Cole Holcomb and John Boston were the outside linebackers. So that's pretty interesting. Jamin Davis taking on that role as a rookie and uh, people were at, you know, he can play all three linebacker spots. So position flex is big with Jamin Davis, but that's, that's pretty important for the rookie. He it looks like he's going to be the Mike linebacker. And like I said, this is just OTA. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, Sammy Reyes made a nice catch. This is from JP Finley. Sam, Sammy Reyes made a nice catch down the seam. Would have been a major co collision in real life, but not in May. So that's good to hear about Sammy Reyes catching the football. Um, and then also a lot of people were saying that, um, John Bates looked pretty darn good today. John Bates made a, a couple good catches and that he's really been impressing, uh, with his hands as well. And that he's a very, very strong blocker. So, Looks like he impressed. And then also Cam Sims caught a nice catch from Ryan Fitzpatrick or Ryan Fitzmagic. This is what uh, Ron Rivera said in uh, in his press conference. He said, he, what John Com says, Ron Rivera pointed to, to with Ryan Fitzpatrick was a deep back shoulder fade pass to Cam Sims. It was a perfect ball and a nice route by Cam Sims. So he was pretty happy about that. So I'm, I'm happy to hear about Cam Sims. I mean, he's, he's more of a practice guy. I'm not going to say he's just a practice player. But there are some times where the lights comes on and he drops the football. But I I do think Cam Sims is going to make this roster. I think he's going to be one of the last wide receivers to make this roster. So it, it's going to be an interesting battle for sure. Um, so, you know, we got, we got to see Bobby McCain out there a little bit. He looked pretty good. Derek Forrest, uh, Kendall Fuller also had a pass breakup as well. The defense got hyped. So um, just good to see some of the guys back out there. Terry McLaurin, AGG, Calvin Harmon coming back from an injury as well. Looks like he lost some weight. Ron Rivera said he actually he made a nice he made a nice catch on the sideline as well. So Calvin Harmon is interested to see him come back too. So this wide receiver battle is going to be very tough. And a lot of people were talking about him switching to H back or tight end, but it looks like he did the opposite and lost some weight there. So that is interesting to see from Calvin Harmon. Um, running backs didn't really they didn't really talk too much about the running backs. Uh, corners William Jackson talked at a press conference and just saying that he's happy about. The, uh, the change of scenery. So um, he says, sometimes you just need a change of scenery to reach your full potential. This is from William Jackson, the third of the cornerback that we acquired from the Bengals. So I'm um, happy to hear that about him. DeShazer Everett coming back, like I said, from the pectoral injury. Uh, Kendall Fuller, Jimmy Moreland out there as well, too. So uh, D-line looks good. Everybody looks good. It's just OTA, so it's just good to see. And then you see um, there was also a picture of Ryan Fitzmagic and Terry McLaurin talking about routes and just trying to get timing down and everything like that. So 
Um, looks like they should be having some fun and getting a lot of work in. Just hope, hope that everybody stays healthy through these first three days of OTAs. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, I should be going live tonight with my elite channel members. Uh, we'll be talking about all the moves that were made. Of course, Morgan Moses again and Bobby McCain. And then, um, of course, you know, a lot of people were talking about Julio Jones. So I highly doubt we make a trade for Julio Jones. I wouldn't be upset if Ron Rivera traded for Julio Jones. It depends on what we give up, but it, it, I just highly doubt it happens anyway. I, I do like this wide receiver core, but we'll probably talk about more stuff like that tonight. Um, so stay tuned. It probably will be at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys have the notification bell with my Elite Channel members. Should be a blast. All right, you guys. Hail to the football team. Peace.